Hi and welcome to the Ideal Calibrations How to Calibrate Your Gas Detector Series. Today we're going to be looking at the Tango TX1. Uh, this is a hydrogen sulfide single gas diffusion unit and uh, we're going to be calibrating with 25 parts per million hydrogen sulfide with a nitrogen balance. Uh, usually balance hydrogen sulfide with nitrogen instead of air because it helps keep it stable longer. It's, uh, there's no oxygen to react with. So regulator wise you need a 0.5 liter per minute fixed flow regulator and Here's our calibration adapter. It came with the unit and just a little bit of tubing. Okay, let's get this started up. Press and hold the button on the left. Wait for it to start up. And now it's going to go through a self-test. So uh, you can see a few things here. You're going to watch the flashing lights going off, the horn sounds, and the vibrating alarm just went off. So I know that those things are working now. So it's going to go through a few of the settings, it's going to go through the time, date, things along those lines uh, that it has in here, as well as your alarm limits, low and high. Uh, it'll go through Stell and TWA. Uh, if you want to make changes to this, you've, you've got to hook into it through an IR reader that's on the docking stations. So you can get that from ISC if you have one. Okay, now we're in normal reading mode. This one's at zero and it's going to negative one and it was at point two when we started. So it might just be stabilizing, but it probably needs calibration. Looks like it's been a little while for it. So let's put this one down here. Let's get our tubing ready before we do anything else. First thing, grab our regulator. Uh, put the tubing on it. This one here. Uh, one thing we're going to do is you want to open up your regulator valve. And you do this because if you screw this into the cylinder, there's a little bit of space here. Uh, moisture that's in the air can then get jammed inside the cylinder so we want to open this up so when the pressure comes through the cylinder it shoots this way and blasts that air, that air and any of that moisture out of the way so open this up grab our cylinder here slide it in start screwing it in and we're waiting to hear about it's a little ping sounders just letting us know that this the uh, pressure is starting to flow there you go you see the gauge moved up so now we're going to stop the valve now that it's been purged we can continue screwing it in. Don't have to screw it in hard. Uh, just just till it hits the end there. That's all you need to do. It's got an O-ring and seal in there, so you don't need to use a whole lot of pressure. Okay, put this down. All right, now we're gonna put this monitor into zero mode. And now some of you, some of the units we've seen come in, they don't have this function readily available, or there's a bump function. Uh, so I want you to watch very carefully, and if you have a configuration issue where your screen shows something different than mine does based on either you may have docked it in a docking station at someone else's facility and it overrode your settings, or if you have uh, settings that are factory enabled that are different than mine, uh, go ahead and just leave us a comment, I'm happy to get back to you, or you can give us a call here uh, and I'll walk you through how to fix it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to press the power button on the left and enter button is on the right, just so you, so you can see them. Power button, press it once, press it twice, and now the screen on mine shows a zero. Uh, you might need to press it once more and to get there, but there's a checkbox up here. But the major thing we're looking for is this zero right there, if you can see that. So we're going to hit enter. And now what it's doing is it's zeroing the unit. It's telling us that the air here is fresh and clean. It should be reading 0.0. .0 parts per million of hydrogen sulfide. So we'll just let that go. It just takes a little while. Okay, that beep and that double pass, that's one for each sensor on the unit that detects H2S. We're gonna hit power. Now that power sends us into calibration mode, which is what we wanna do. We're gonna hit enter now. So now it's saying, hey, I want 25 parts per million hydrogen sulfide put our cap on, has to click on there nice and strong, and then turn the gas on. Now, one thing is you want to make sure that this is actually clipped together the way like this. You don't want any uh, spaces where the air can flow out because that'll adjust your calibration. Now, Industrial Scientific does something different than most other manufacturers here. They're showing what they call span reserve here. So essentially is once you're above 25, this is the maximum value that it could go up to, that, it, that the software could adjust up to based on how your sensors are performing with this level of gas. So over time, as the sensor ages, this will start going down. 
And once you're below the amount on your calibration gas, you'll want to reorder it. You got a few more cals, but you should stop then. Okay, we got pass and pass. We're going to turn this off. And now we're going to pop the top on the gas. Now this one's not always easy to get this calibration adapter off, but easiest way that I found to do it is you just put it down on the ground, get a good grip on it, and then take these two things and instead of pushing here on the tips, push right back on that back of that case and pry that up. Uh, and that should pop it off a little bit easier. Okay, so that's the calibration procedure and you can see the unit's bringing it back down now. But on that sensor reserve, if that doesn't make it up to 25 where your calibration gas is, it's probably about time to order either uh, a new sensor or you may even want to check the gas. If you're having the problem on multiple units, always make sure you check the gas when you have a hydrogen sulfide cylinder because a lot of times uh, those are the sensors, cylinders that fade, I mean. So the, this gas in here, it's highly reactive. So um, the st constant struggle for all gas companies is keeping this gas stable. Uh, so occasionally there are product failures. You know, you'll get cylinders that have an issue or you'll, and you just, one day it'll just have a problem. It'll be fine for a while and then it'll just start dropping maybe because of moisture brought in there. Uh, and I've got videos that uh, talk about that as well. So you can go watch the, those ones if you're interested in that. Uh, but essentially, just remember to check your gas if you have a hydrogen sulfide failure. But it could also be that the sensors need to be replaced. So make sure you, you check. These have a two-year warranty on them. So you can check and see from when you, when you got the unit. Uh, and if you have a problem within two years, ISC will help you out. Or we can help you out if you give us a call. So this sensor is calmed down now. I was kind of given a monologue to give it a little bit of time. So it's come down to zero. Uh, I'm going to show you how to run a bump test. Uh, running a bump test on this unit, uh, depending on how your software is set up, you can either go to it. I don't have this one set up on this unit here, uh, but there's a screen, and I'll show you. It's, it's, I believe, let's see, here's normal reading mode. If you press once, twice, your screen may come up with a B, in which case you can hit enter and then put this gas on. Uh, I don't like that software setting. Uh, sometimes it has, it's just it's just not a convenient one for me. Sometimes when it fails, it, it mucks the instrument up and it wasn't because there was an actual failure. Uh, but that, that's a different story right there. So what, what you would do is go to the screen, hit enter, and then put the gas on. What I'm going to do is show you how to do a functional bump test. That is the, the way we've done it, kind of the, we can call it the old-fashioned way, which is to just do the bump test, check, make sure everything went right, and then write the things down on a checklist. Okay, so here we go. Turn the unit on. You want it in normal reading mode. I'm going to take our calibration adapter on here, click it on, and now we're just going to turn our gas on. It just takes about 10 to 15 seconds or so. Open it up all the way. I always back it off a little bit. Okay, and that's what we're waiting for. See the alarm? The strobes are going off. You can hear the alarm, and I can feel it vibrating right now. Uh, so that's good. We can turn our gas off. And one other thing we checked is that the sensor values were going up towards the intended destination. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily have to hit 25.0, but as long as it's traveling up there quickly and all of your alarms are going off, that's great. That's a good functional bump test. Okay, we'll let this bring itself back down. And in the meantime, if you guys have any questions or anything along those lines, you know, feel free to give us a call. Number here is 734-956. 0539 or you can send an email to support at idealcalibrations.com uh, if you like the video and you want to see more content please like subscribe all that sort of thing if there's a video you'd like us to make for you put it in the comments and uh, we'll try and get it done thank you much you guys have a great day stay safe out there